the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. We come now to Passion Sunday. As is evident from the draped crucifix and images of Our Lady and the saints and the angels, draped in the color of this Lenten season. The long-standing tradition for this arises from the gospel which was just proclaimed, a gospel in which our Lord hid himself from his enemies. Jesus hid himself not out of fear, but in obedience to the timing and the manner in which his heavenly Father had determined the death of the Son of God. It was not yet his time, though that time was quickly approaching. And so we are reminded by the covering of the images of Christ and fittingly then angels and saints that the passion of our Lord is not far off. In fact, I have noted that Christ's presence on earth, the church, is undergoing a passion, a passion which will continue to intensify in the months and years ahead. And we should expect that because the fallen world belongs to the prince of darkness and until the final war, he will continue to battle against the body of Christ, the bride of Christ here on earth. But sadly, in addition to the passion of persecution by outsiders, we are also enduring and have been enduring, especially for decades, another form of passion. I will call it the passion of confusion. This passion is not from outside forces, but it comes from within the institutional church the passion of confusion. It has been present for 50, 60 years, and it too is intensifying. Last week, it was in international news that the Vatican responded to a dubium, which means doubt, which is a question about an uncertain matter, the Vatican responded to a dubium publicly, or at least it was made public, regarding the question as to whether or not ministers of the church may bless so-called uh, same-sex unions, unions of homosexual partners. Quite rightly, the response of the Vatican was no, in the negative. The church's ministers may not give sacramental blessings to homosexual unions. And within the lengthy, verbose response of the Vatican, it boiled down to the fact that uh, the church cannot sacramentally bless that which is sinful. And that is right and true. But many activists who have been pushing for a sacramental recognition of such intrinsically disordered and sinful relationships rightly called foul on the Vatican. Noting that in other ways the Vatican and even Francis himself have shown support for homosexual unions. And in fact, that is true. Elements of the hierarchy, including within the Vatican and worldwide among bishops, have shown support for homosexual unions. Francis himself has expressed publicly the rights, so-called, 
of homosexuals in such unions. It's even contained within a recent documentary on Francis in which he makes such appeals for full civil rights for homosexual partners. And those who cry foul are right because you can't have it both ways. You cannot have a church saying, we will not sacramentally bless this union because it is sinful, and on the other hand, have the Vatican and other members of the hierarchy saying, but go ahead and enter into such unions and governments and institutions and all others should recognize and give them full rights as though they are married. That I'm calling the passion of confusion. And perhaps the most prominent of the public homosexuals to call out the Vatican on this was Elton John. Elton John denounced the Vatican in a tweet. Now, I don't tweet and I don't Twitter, but I've seen copies of the tweet, which reads, in effect, or raises the question, how can the Vatican profit from my movie or the movie about me, Rocket Man, which is all about my homosexual life, and at the same time denounce the blessing of such unions as I have had in my life. Called them out for duplicity. My friends, some of you may be hearing this for the first time. Some of us have known of this for a long time. The scandalous reality is the Vatican took Peter's Pence money, money that the faithful contributed, assuming it was going to acts of charity, and invested a great deal of that money in a homosexual pornographic movie about an open homosexual, Elton John. And I assume they must have made some profit with our money because Elton John has called them out in a tweet, and rightly so. My friends, it's hard enough to suffer a passion at the hands of unbelieving persecutors, but it's been so hard to suffer at the hands of our own in this passion of confusion. But that happened in the time of our Lord. He was handed over by his own to be crucified and then crucified at the hands of the persecutors, the outsiders, but it was a collaboration. So we're seeing history play out again. And God knows what lies ahead within our own lifetimes of an apocalyptic nature. But whatever passion that the church suffers, or even in this case, the institutional church inflicts, it adds to our sorrow because it is a passion of Christ's body here on earth. It makes us all the more resolved that uh, we will accept with grace the passion which we must suffer and we will continue unabated to follow the path of truth in the midst of confusion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.